So good morning, everybody. Uh, today, I will uh, try to share with you uh, our experience with Triton. We, we want to go through uh, all the steps that uh, we described yesterday, but uh, from a technical point, uh, point of view. Uh, so I will, uh, it will be technical, but I will uh, uh, just try to, uh, maybe I will, I'm repeating stuff that we say uh, yesterday. So we, uh, we have chosen Triton, uh, and we think now, uh, four years or five years later, that it's a very good platform for developers. So uh, from the first day, we have, we, uh, we have been focused on uh, our vertical, on our business. Uh, we, uh, we have very good practices for developers, so it's very easy to, when using Triton to, uh, to manage a team, to drive uh, persons to work on, uh, on your business because uh, there are already rules and uh, we don't need to, uh, to have our own uh, rules to, uh, for, uh, for, develop, for development. Uh, there is also modularity, so uh, today uh, code uh, uses, uh, I think, 20, 20 modules from uh, Triton Core modules, and we have uh, almost 150 uh, 50 modules that are uh, for, for insurance. So uh, we had the possibility to split really uh, technical staff, uh, common uh, insurance uh, modules, and, uh, and vertical for specialized, specialized lines, uh, lines of business. And uh, another thing is also when, when you start developing a, a, an application, so the first problems that you face are uh, user management, uh, internationalization, translation, and all of this stuff is already there in, uh, in Triton. So from the first day, you start uh, developing your first model for, uh, for us, it was for insurance, and uh, you have all the, all the stuff around to, uh, to, uh, to, to start. But after uh, four years of working on Triton, uh, there is something that we miss on the platform. It's the same thing for, uh, for operating, for deploying uh, the application. So when we start, it's very easy, but once we get the uh, thing uh, going, uh, going live, we, have, we don't have really practices to, uh, to, deploy, uh, to deploy Triton, to, uh, to monitor uh, the application, to, uh, to scale it, so uh, that's why I'm, uh, I will talk today about uh, all, uh, all of that, to share our experience and uh, to, uh, to try to avoid, to repeat uh, what, we have, uh, what, we have, uh, what we have made. Uh, so just for the experience, we, we fa we, uh, la last year we, we faced, uh, we experienced uh, many issues on, uh, on scaling the application to get to be used by uh, 50 full-time uh, users on, uh, for, for insurance. But the good, uh, the good news is that we, uh, what, what, what I'm saying is that Triton, it scales very good, very well, but there is no practices for that. So the question is not, uh, I'm not saying that uh, we, the, the problems that we faced are just uh, about documentation, about uh, knowing how to do that. But after doing that, we know today, and we, can, uh, we have uh, many, uh, we have the experience and we have many platforms that, uh, that, uh, that are live, that Triton uh, scales very well, and we have, uh, we have made a benchmark with uh, a French uh, integrator called Smile. Uh, with, uh, with them, we, uh, we have uh, invoiced one million contract on a database of uh, Six million contracts, one million active, and five million that uh, that are uh, that are not active, in about one hour. It's not uh, uh, only one node who made the, who made the job. It was I think it was on 20, 24 uh, processes, Triton processes, uh, and uh, we can uh, we know that as much as we uh, we add uh, we add processes, we add CPUs, we add the memory, we can uh, we can scale. And uh, that's, uh, that's the good news for us, uh, for, uh, for Triton. Uh, so what are the problems that, uh, that we faced? Uh, mainly, uh, for, uh, we, we were using, last year, we, we were using uh, the version 3.8. 
So uh, we have only a single process for application. And uh, I know that for 4.0, for we, we have the possibility to, uh, to scale with uh, MicroWSD or we are, we are compliant to, uh, to this protocol. But uh, before, uh, before 4.0, it wasn't the case. Uh, other problems that we have is that we have two, uh, two match server calls. And uh, this, is, this is due to our model, because we have uh, function fields on change and all of this stuff that makes uh, communic he heavy communication between uh, the client and the server. But uh, something, a particular uh, problem that, uh, that we have and we discovered later is that uh, sometimes you make a configuration on the client to, make, to, to store, for example, the column width and uh, the, the trees, the states uh, on the server. And uh, we discovered later that it makes too many, too, too much calls uh, to, uh, to the server. And uh, it's a feature that we don't need uh, when we have, uh, when we have uh, performance problems. We, we prefer not having that and, uh, and, uh, and going fast, but uh, you need to know that this configuration, uh, it, makes, it makes calls, and that was the issue for me. The, the problem is that we don't have a warning to say uh, uh, when, you, when you choose this configuration, so uh, you, get, uh, you will get that problem. Uh, the other problem that we have also is that uh, we, uh, per, per call to the server, we, have, uh, we, we spend too much time. And uh, also, this is due to our, uh, to our business. We are uh, making uh, rating uh, on um, on Triton, and uh, this means that we call we, we have developed the rule engine on on Triton, so we, we make sequential sequential uh, calls to the rule engine. Sometimes we make uh, one thousand calls for uh, for a rule, and this takes this uh, this takes too much time. And uh, we are when when you are working on a server on on a, on a single server, and you make uh, such heavy calls, so the other users uh, cannot do the uh, the application. So when uh, when you when you have uh, 50 persons that work on the application, and it's uh, it's not easy to uh, uh, to make them work on uh, on uh, on one uh, server. Uh, so the uh, one, oh, I, I will. Uh, what we have made so for, for all these problems that we faced uh, is that we have developed tools to understand what happened. Because uh, what, what I'm saying today is uh, the result of the analysis that uh, we made uh, one year ago to understand uh, what's going wrong in, uh, on the server. And uh, these tools, we, we have shared them, and we'll talk about that uh, later. And uh, what we, uh, we, we made also is that we have uh, imp improved for our uh, custom use, uh, the, the way uh, how to deploy uh, how to deploy Triton. So I will show just an example of one one issue that we have, and it's, it's not it's not easy to uh, to understand um, just to understand what happened there. But when you make profiling and you see that uh, there is a function that's called hash uh, that is called on uh, on on record, you are wondering why why we are calling this. And uh, it was uh, via the tools that we have developed that uh, we uh, we understood the problem, and it was we ha we have made this modification for our, for our custom uh, custom use. It's not uh, here; we doesn't fix a bug, so uh, it works as well as before, but it's just uh, that uh, it's going faster. Okay, yeah. Uh, and did you understood what happened? Because IDs, uh, you just call the hash yeah. methods, which, if I remember, give you just a tuple with the name of the model and the ID. Yeah. So yeah. it should not be so costly. Okay, so uh, this this particular method is uh, when you call save on a, a lot of records which were not already saved. The thing is the uh, hash method is more than just the tuple with the model and the ID because there is not yet an ID. So when you have a lot of fields, it, uh, use, it creates a dictionary the, with uh, some data, it, uh, it prints out the records and uh, it's it may be very expensive. We were doing this with a uh, 
uh, thousands of uh, of instances at once. So uh, so it, it was expensive, and um, using uh, we we knew that uh, for this use case we had to uh, just using the ID. Uh, it's sorry. We have one pointer for the record. So yeah, it's uh, it it was far more efficient. So, but uh, we. Mm, well, okay. Yeah, I I know that uh, we we were lazy, and we were not uh, we have not proposed this uh, as a review, <laughs> but uh, I think uh, during that period it was really difficult because we we have a client we need to uh, to go uh, to go live at uh, the end of, by the end of the year. And uh, we had no solution. So our problems, our our problem uh, last year, it was just to get stuff done, just to go uh, to go live. Now it's done. I think that uh, we should uh, we should work more on uh, on our fork to uh, to get stuff uh, going uh, as fast. We we forgot about it. Uh, just we discovered it for the conference. <laughs> okay. So uh, so what what I what I said is that. Uh, we, I will talk about three uh, three uh, topics. The first one uh, are tools. So I will talk about two things that we have developed for um, for Tricep: the debug modules, the debug module, and the per performance analyzer. So these are tools that uh, we we have not. Uh, they were developed by step by step. I mean, uh, first there was just scripts. And hacks on, on the server to uh, to, uh, to make time traces. After that, we uh, we have worked on that to uh, to improve them. Now I think that uh, they can be used by anyone who uh, who, who is using Triton, and that's why we are sharing this uh, today. Uh, for debug module, I think that before it was in our internal modules, and we uh, we separate uh, we separated to get uh, to get it as a standalone module, and uh, it's it's completely usable by uh, by anyone uh, who's using Triton. For the second part, uh, I will talk about uh, the solutions that uh, that made us uh, able to uh, to, uh, to go uh, to go further with uh, with our client. So how we uh, we made uh, how we deployed Triton to get uh, to get our 50 users work on uh, on Kog and uh, it was uh, it, it's running today. It's good. We have no problem. So it's, uh, we could say we can say that it's uh, approved. Uh, it's an approved uh, solution. Okay. Hello. Okay, it works now. Uh, so I'll talk a little about the tools we're using for development. Uh, we got first one is the debug model. Um, the idea was that we we. The main problem is that with Triton, when you're working on different uh, databases, you do not exactly have the same model because there are, depending on the models, you may have fields that are uh, that are uh, on the model, or they may be not because the module is not installed. And uh, and also sometimes when you, when you want just to, you you may have to to have a, a quick just uh, read some information from a record. You want to know. Uh, an execution, uh, you want to execute a method, a method on a record just to see uh, some values and uh, sometimes just uh, opening, uh, um, m printing something in the code may be either not possible because uh, we have a lot, we often work with some clients, we may not have access to their, uh, even their testing server, I mean uh, the uh, running Triton D instance. So they're telling us, yeah, we got a problem on, uh, somewhere and we need to be able to to do some sort of debugging without access to the uh, running uh, server. So uh, with this module, we can have some simple evaluation. We'll make a demonstration later. Uh, there are uh, some tools for uh, model introspection, so extracting uh, data from, uh, from the model on a specific database. That means uh, being able to know uh, which um, modules overrode which models, uh, where the fields were added, which methods were overridden, and where they were overridden. Uh, you may also see, for instance, the um, um, the final domain or states for the fields. Uh, so you don't have to uh, look around all the setup uh, setup calls to know finally which is the 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 domain or state that applies. 
And uh, we got a few utilities like uh, a Python converter to transform a Python string to, uh, to a, a JSONified version. So you can use it, uh, for instance, uh, in views or things like this. Uh, and a few editor hooks, for instance, to, uh, to open files uh, when you're browsing the model to open the definition and things like this uh, from the application. And, uh, and it, it is usable, for instance, uh, there is a, I made a, a small uh, Veeam uh, plugin that uses it for, uh, for completion and things like that. <laughs> so we will, I'll make a demonstration later. Uh, and uh, the second one, is the, and another tool is the Perf Analyzer, Performance Analyzer. So uh, the idea was that more or less uh, the, the same, we wanted to be able to easily monitor uh, specific server calls uh, we wanted to profile them and uh, uh, have access to the uh, timings of the DB calls. And uh, so we made this, uh, this module, which it's, more, um, it's not a Triton module, it's more a Python module that needs to be integrated with that. We, are, we have a few, uh, a few patches on our Triton D fork, uh, which is in GitHub, uh, to make it work. Um, it allows to, uh, you can define in the configuration which calls uh, you want to monitor. You can uh, s uh, set up a user the, which will, you will monitor. That means that you can use, uh, you can uh, set up a special uh, debug user on your server and only the calls from this user will be monitored so as not to uh, overload, to, to have an overhead for all the other users. Uh, it uses Redis and you can uh, parse and query the results so it will automatically uh, profile the calls that you define and you will be able to browse, to browse them uh, through Redis. So uh, I'll show you uh, later how it's done in a demonstration. Uh, okay, so I, I'll, show, I'll show you now. <laughs> so. Okay, so uh, when you install, uh, I'll first talk about the debug module. Uh, when you install it, you'll get a new entry point in the administration. The, it's not a module that should be used in production because it adds some, uh, I'd say, unsafe features. For instance, uh, arbitrary code uh, execution. You can, uh, uh, there are places where you can just write some code and it will be executed. So you can, obviously, it's not a good idea to use it in, in a production environment. So, uh, um, the, the, the first thing I, I, will, I will talk about is the, uh, in the model, uh, the introspection uh, parts. So here there is a, a wizard that, uh, that's added uh, when you install the module that will browse um, the model and uh, store it in the database. Uh, it may take some time depending on how, may, how much module you have installed because it will, uh, it, it's, um, it stores a lot of data. So I, I show you now, it's a rather a small database with only a few modules like accounting and invoicing uh, installed. So here you have uh, the list of models. So you have all, all models uh, which are uh, SQL models and uh, view models. You can, uh, so you can uh, filter and find them, find them. You know which module uh, in which module were they uh, declared first and uh, when you open one you have the list of all fields okay so uh, for each field you know uh, here we know simply which module declared it and uh, some uh, the, the kind of field and whether it's a function field or not okay and uh, when you open it, you have more information. You can know, uh, for instance, this one is a one too many, so you know which, which model it's, uh, it targets. You can know if there are uh, default, order, on change methods. You can know which fields it depends on if there is an unchange. And this, here you can see the domain invisible readily required states, which, will be, which are evaluated, uh, uh, which depends on the which modules are installed on the application. So uh, I know here maybe currency digits. So here you know it, you, it's a function field uh, on which we know the getter here. We've got a link to the method. Uh, you know that it's read only because it's written here and, uh, and everything, okay? Uh, the other thing you can see here is that, uh, sorry. <coughs> 
here you have uh, where where the modules uh, were defined. So um, uh, where the model was defined, what, what is the inheritance of the uh, of the module of the model? And maybe I'll use another one, which is more uh, the where there are more things. Maybe here. Okay. So here you see that the the model was defined in party uh, in the party module of origin in account and of origin in account invoice. Okay, so you, you can easily know depending on which modules are installed where uh, wh which module made a modification to the model. You can also see here uh, the views the same way. So you have for each view uh, where it was uh, which module uh, define it and uh, all the uh, over it overrides. Okay, um, useful as well. And here you can see all of the uh, non-default uh, non methods. So you won't see a method that is defined in model SQL or model storage if it's not overridden. And you can see for each method uh, where it was uh, overridden as well here. So you can see, for instance, the setup uh, was overridden in, party, in, the, in the party module and in the account invoice module. Okay? So, um, it, it should, it's mainly useful when you have multiple databases with multiple uh, different modules which are installed everywhere. And uh, sometimes, really, you can spend a lot of time just trying to know, uh, just knowing in which order uh, are the, uh, super cold, uh, the super calls are done. Uh, when, uh, when, you, when you see here, the order which is here is the uh, method resolution order. So you know that the first one, which will be called with the account invoice, and then party, and then uh, override the uh, initial uh, initial method. So um, it's uh, it, it can be really useful. Uh, and uh, what I can show is that uh, you can uh, there there are so, some hooks. Uh, it's uh, basically it's based on uh, the editor uh, environment variable. So if you have the client and the server on the same uh, machine, your development machine, you can uh, click here, for instance, and uh, here it will open the definition. Okay, it's uh, this this is specific uh, to uh, NeoVim because that's what I'm using. So uh, it's also uh, open the uh, exact place in the file and everything, but uh, it's just uh, a small snippet of code to write somewhere. So if someone wants to uh, customize it for other editors, it's, it should be no problem. Just uh, ask us. It's, so the module is available on GitHub. So uh, if someone knows how to do it for Emacs or uh, Sublime Text or anything, yeah, just, uh, just say it and uh, we can integrate it. Uh, so that's for the, uh, m uh, the introspection parts. Uh, another thing we have here, so we can open here. Uh, it's a it's a small plugin that's a client plugin that's not available. You can access it through a wizard. Uh, for now, uh, I, I use a plugin, but it's easier. But uh, it's not public yet. We should make it. Uh, it's uh, uh, available everywhere, and you can open the current record you run in a, a special debug view, where you have uh, all the fields and their values uh, evaluated here. Uh, and you can uh, uh, evaluate anything. So, for instance, I can write uh, instance where dot create date. Uh, it will print the value here. Uh, but you can do things like uh, x dot name for x in and what debug model uh, in uh, x uh, in uh, instance dot search uh, uh, name uh, like. Uh, country uh, this okay and I have this uh, it's more useful when you have for instance some special uh, method in your call getters or uh, that you just don't understand the behavior you don't understand why the value you're seeing in the application is that that is written so uh, it helps it's not uh, it, it, it will not replace a PGB when you're really stuck but uh, when you don't have access to the server because uh, it's on a client, uh, a client hardware, and you don't have access to. With this module installed, you can uh, have some help to to know what's going on. Okay. Uh, just questions? No. Yeah. <laughs> For the first part yeah. about the introspection. Yeah. Did you thought about just writing a kind of command line uh, on the server? 
and w using the Python introspection. And so you have just a Python console with the pool loaded for the database and stuff like that, and you just introspect the... It, it, yeah, it could be done, but the idea was that uh, storing it in the model made it easier for, for instance, sometimes when you're trying sort of refactor or things like those, we can directly query uh, the database. Uh, you want to know where a field is used or anything, you can, it's, you can do it through the database. Uh, I think it could be done. Uh, really, it's, uh, the, the debug module is more like a, a tool set, so if you want to add something, it's no problem. It's not, it doesn't have to be uh, as uh, stable or anything like a, a standard module that you want to use uh, for a production environment. It's more like a helper, helpers, uh, so really, if, it's, it, if it's a good idea, but it can, could probably be done, but uh, we, we didn't do it yet. Um, what, what I didn't show, for instance, what, uh, something uh, I've been using, I, I, I didn't show it, that for instance, I was talking we could uh, use uh, the data from the database or anything uh, elsewhere. For instance, here uh, in, uh, in NeoVim, uh, I, I, I have a small plugin, a Triton plugin. You can uh, use it to, uh, to browse some contents. For instance, here I have access to, uh, I'm on the party, uh, the, a party model, so I can have access to uh, the fields here. Uh, I have access to uh, the MRO, uh, so the model resolution and the, all the overrides here. So uh, it's useful. And uh, I have, there is some completion setup, so you can just, uh, you have here, you can have all the fields and what they're defined, the methods and, uh, and everything. It's, it's, it's tooling, so uh, it's, not, uh, it's not mandatory, but you can use it and uh, it helps. Uh, you, well, that's it. I think this, uh, the, the module you showed, uh, it's particularly useful for people that are starting, some of them. Some people here want to start at least taking a look at Triton. Yeah, it, it and helps. I think we should try to push this kind of things to core or a mod module that is very visible because uh, when people start, uh, if you put this kind of things in an external module, you are only making things harder for people starting with Triton. And what do you think, Sarek? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, but uh, I don't think Triton is a project made to, to create uh, editor plugins. No, no we, I, not, I, not the, the editor part. The, the oh, module okay. which tells you which field where was defined. Uh, Triton has already this, ah, okay. but you have all the inheritance uh, structure and where the field has been redefined and this kind of, kind of things. N nevertheless, the the editor plugin is, is nice because I use NeoVim too and I find it really nice, but it's not really something that we should maintain, that's what I say. Oh, no, ob obviously uh, it's more, and even for us it's more something that I, uh, I did myself as a side project because uh, I like Vim and I uh, wanted to have it, but uh, it's really not, uh, should not be part of the core. The thing is, uh, it's more, for us, it's more like a, as a tool set, it's not, um, it may not be up to the standards of the uh, Triton, uh, the core modules, because it's more, uh, it's tooling for developers, so if it crashes sometimes, it's not a problem. No, uh, it, the, the thing is that it could be part of Triton Core, or at least it should be very visible for those yeah. that are starting to develop. Yeah. Because it's going to, uh, at least in our case, uh, you always work in the same code base, and yes, sometimes that can be useful, but you can live without it. But I think that somebody that is starting, the, the, the learning curve is very tight. Yeah, so it's, it helps, of course hard. it helps. I think that what we need is just a common uh, a common place where we can push and publish stuff like that from uh, from anyone who wants to contribute and uh, in this way it, uh, we can uh, we can find the right uh, resources in, uh, in one place. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll just uh, now I'll just tell you a little about the uh, performance analyzer. So. Uh, <coughs> So I I, I lost I I'll uh, start a refresh of the uh, of the model just assume because it's it takes some time so it's good for a performance analyze. Um, just uh, so you'll see here with the configuration I uh, I set up uh, 
I don't know if you can read it. Yeah. Uh, so um, you, I'm saying uh, we're using a Redis broker to store the information uh, on the admin user because that's the one I'm using. We're saying which uh, methods, uh, which server calls we want to monitor because the uh, the performance analyzer you plug in on the dispatcher. So uh, you have you uh, you just define which uh, where where do you, what do you want to listen to, and it will uh, it will use it here. Uh, and the query part is just for uh, we we say we won't monitor anything that's more than uh, that less than uh, two uh, two hundred milliseconds. Okay. Uh, so it's done. So uh, I'll show you now uh, what it looks like. Uh, so I'm I'm using our our command line here, which is just a wrapper to Lua script, which is uh, in the performance analyzer module. Uh, so uh, I'm just used to it, and it's uh, just it's wrap around the uh, Lua script, which uh, which executes on uh, on Redis. So session, I know, but okay. Uh, so here I, here I can see the the, uh, the different se uh, debugging sessions I did. So uh, here I I can find here my session which took uh, 39 uh, seconds. Uh, its ID is uh, all this. So I just I just need to know which is the ID of the session. Here, here we say the number of calls to the server uh, and the total time uh, sorry. that we uh, spend uh, that we spend on server. Here. Th time is the total s the and total here. time that we spend on server, and the uh, number is uh, the number of calls uh, that uh, that we made to uh, to calculate. Okay, so uh, now that I know the session I uh, I'm working on, I can see all the method c the um, the server calls. Uh, you can show the help uh, the help on that. The help is here. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so uh, so now I'll show the uh, method calls that were made. So I just need to uh, s to say which session I want to. M to look at, and here I saw all the calls that were made during the uh, from the login to the uh, to the logout when it's done. Uh, so I can see here that it was a call to uh, refresh execute, which is the uh, without I started, which took 34 seconds. Did you make here? Uh, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, I just ah okay uh, no okay. Better? Uh, are those cumulative times or? Uh yeah, th those are done at the, uh, it's not a profiling, not here. It's just uh, a wrapper around the uh, dispatcher. So we know when we started and when we ended the call to the server call. It's just to understand uh, first, uh, you, you can be very uh, specific, but I don't know if it's the word, but uh, if you if you want to know uh, precisely what a specific action will take, you don't understand because you you start you're opening a view, and uh, it takes forever, and you don't know there are, there has been maybe uh, 30 calls because there are reads, there are unchanged, there are a lot of things uh, views to get and everything view to get and everything. So uh, you want to know what uh, what were the exchanges with the server and the client. So of course you can just see it uh, in the log if you are, if you are uh, in debug mode, but. Here it's just stored in Redis. You can query it. You can you can have more. Uh, it, it's easier to to read, and you have the timings and everything, and how much each method was, uh, each uh, service the, the, was the called. The time that has been spent on, on that method, and we can order uh, this list by average or by by number or by average or uh, the total time by default total time, but uh, can be. Uh... Uh, okay, so. That one method. Now I'm, go, I'm going with uh, with table. Uh, here I also all, I see all the all the. Oops, sorry. Uh, Remove method. Yeah. Typo. Uh, so here I see all the calls that were made to the database during the session. Uh, so uh, I see here that I spent a lot of time uh, time on uh, debug model field. It's. Uh, it's logical because we dropped everything and recreated everything, so it, it takes some time. I mean, in terms of uh, database, so uh, but you got some insight on how many calls were there to the database and anything. And okay, so for instance, if I have a, a method here, uh, I just check it out. I want to have more information on. Uh, Pas un truc qui manque L'ID du call il est où Je sais plus ce que c'est. 
Ah oui, non, c'est quoi C'est quoi C'est un call. Hein. C'est call, oui, c'est call. Uh, sorry. Uh, so here in calls, I have all, uh, all the details. There are no aggregates. Uh, and here you, you ca we can get, for instance, for uh, our method here, we can have uh, an, uh, an ID, an identification for this, this specific uh, call to this server, which is number one. But that here we see the total time that we spend for one call, how much time we spend on database, and how many calls uh, we made to database during that call. And the idea is to, uh, w when we see uh, <coughs> seven uh, milliseconds uh, compared to 33, so it, it gives an idea of, about uh, uh, does a call uh, have uh, has he heavy uh, call to database or not. Okay. Uh, so here we got our uh, very long call, which took uh, 35 uh, seconds. We got its ID, which is 68. Okay. And now I say I want to monitor to have some more information. So for instance, I uh, sorry. Uh, profile 868. And now uh, I have a full profile, profiler uh, output for this method. Okay, so uh, everything, well, everything, and everything. But there are a lot of things here. Uh, just showing you something here with the debug module, we had some uh, custom code to uh, name the uh, standard uh, model uh, methods, like uh, create, uh, delete, or all those methods. So uh, to uh, to append the model name. So we can, um, the, some, sometimes we had problem because uh, in the profiling, we, we did a lot of things and uh, we had one, one line for read, uh, for model storage dot read because there, was, there were no overrides in the, uh, in the models. So we never knew, um, it was a specific model that caused the problem, but, uh, but there were, we, were, uh, we, we, we didn't know which model, model. Which model we, uh, we have made uh, too much calls and which one that, uh, that took too much time. So the idea is to split this call. To, if we have 100 calls to, uh, to read, but uh, there are uh, one call uh, which, uh, which takes uh, too much time, and uh, the other ones uh, fine. Fine. Uh, so we can we can see that. Okay. So it's just a little uh, a little code in the JPEG model, which uh, sort of creates a dynamically creates an override for each model for the method that are specified in the uh, uh, in the configuration. So uh, here, uh, I said uh, I said here the list of, of methods I want to uh, override this way, so I can know uh, precisely uh, which uh, method, which uh, model uh, in the profiler. I can see for each model the detail. Okay, uh, so uh, so th that was the uh, profiler, and we can see we can also see the uh, database calls. Uh, for uh, for the for this uh, for all calls for all calls yeah so we can see here we have everything and uh, and uh, finally we can see uh, query uh, which is empty because hopefully our, our code is very well optimized so we didn't have any query that took much than 200 milliseconds but if there were they would appear here. Uh, okay. I think that's right. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think uh, we're done for the uh, for the dem demonstration part on those uh, the, mo the debug model and the uh, performance analyzer module. So if there are quenched questions. Uh, what is the format of the uh, profiling file? I mean, if I want to jump into a file, this is, is this a standard format that it's... The, the profiler part? Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Uh, it's a call to profile, the uh, Python profile. Uh -huh. okay. With cumulative uh, mm. uh, source. Yeah. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I think you store everything in, in the Redis server. Yeah. What if the Redis server is down? Uh, well. No, uh, does no, it I, hang the? Uh, no, I think it's uh, it's uh, the idea is that there is any problem in the performance analyze, analyzing parts, it, it should not uh, no, cause. It should not raise. No, no. No, it, it should not raise anything because uh, the okay. the idea is that um, the performance analyzer part is not part of the debug module. Uh, it can be used uh, in production because you can specify which user should be monitored. 
So uh, for all other users, it's a, it has absolutely no, uh, no uh, in impact. No the typical okay. case is that uh, someone uh, tells you that he has a problem on one process, you connect with the debug user, you reproduce what, he's, uh, what, he, what he had got, and after that you have the results of uh, what's happened on, uh, on, uh, on real uh, on production cases. All right. Okay. Uh, did you thought about using the logging module of Python and uh, having a specific class that push everything to Redis? Sorry? To, uh, the logging Python modules, you can define your own custom handler and you could write one that push stuff to Redis mm. automatically and just this means that for Triton, you just need to put more logging on where you patch it, Triton. Uh, the question is that it's completely, it's uh, decorrelated from the logging because uh, we have we are making some calculation during, uh, for, for time, for example, to calculate averages, to make sums, we make that on Redis, so it's quite specific to, uh, to Redis for this part. And uh, if, we make, uh, if we make like that, we are depending on uh, where we have logged uh, on, uh, on Triton. So uh, where are warnings, errors, and uh, it's not exactly what we have. Uh, we, we were focused on some actions that we want to, to profile or to, uh, to, uh, to, to debug. So that's why. Uh, but your handler could be take a configuration and decide to, to log the, the, the debug, even if you are not in debug mode or I, I'm not sure that we are on the right on, on the right places because we have uh, we have just two places where we uh, we are catching information. We we wrap the, the dispatcher and we wrap the the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Postgres uh, connector to get information. And uh, for that, for example, it, 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 there was no way to get information uh, because uh, on the query uh, on, on the, the query feature. We have the SQL that is evaluated, and uh, this one we uh, we get it from uh, directly from Postgres. That's why we have uh, we have some specific uh, stuff on, uh, on that. Uh, we, we, I think what Cedric said, we could, we could store the information in uh, through logging rather than directly to Redis, but Redis is uh, is maybe easier because uh, he, he's you know, telling that we can use the the, the, the logs, the Triton logs, and put, push them to Redis and uh, make a calculation on that yeah, to extract the uh, idea. Yeah, I mean, lot of, uh, that would mean a lot of logs. Uh, okay. No more questions? Okay, so we just switch back to, uh, to here. Yeah. Here you go. So uh, that, uh, now we have finished with the tools. So I will talk uh, a little bit about uh, the, the deployment and uh, the architecture. We have shown this yesterday, so I want to talk uh, a little bit about that. So what we have made with uh, Triton 3.8 is that uh, we, uh, how much time? Uh, 16 minutes remain. 16 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is a, a typical uh, COG uh, deployment. So we have, uh, we, are, we are no more, we are, we are trying to make to, to put words on um, on paths. So we are no more talking about uh, the Triton server, we are talking about workers. Uh, we have uh, as, uh, as many workers as we want. They are uh, fronted by uh, an Nginx instance uh, to make a reverse proxy, to, to have some security rules, to make load balancing, uh, and uh, to, uh, to manage also SSL, uh, SSL path. So, uh, even if, even if uh, we can we can do this directly in Python, but uh, I think that uh, Nginx is um, good for that. Uh, we are sharing all uh, all these instances uh, cache uh, on on Redis, and uh, we have decided this because we, we have discussion uh, later, and uh, I think that we have not we have tried uh, last year. Uh, and uh, we are not convinced about getting uh, every node with this ca with this cache because uh, it ha it we have a synchronization on database on on starting of each uh, of each transaction, and uh, there are many logs, and we think that it's a good idea to have 
to have Redis outside uh, to get rid of a lot of memory on, uh, on, each, uh, on each node and uh, to, uh, to remove locks. Uh, we have a Postgres uh, database that we have uh, also the same, quietly the same architecture on batch uh, on batch side, but uh, workers are not uh, are managed by uh, by salary. Uh, I think that that's that's all. Ah, uh, the, sorry, the, the web, web with the web services server, it's uh, it's a kind of middleware uh, that we that is developed on. Uh, that, that connect to Triton D for uh, all business objects. And uh, it makes some, uh, it's a kind of abstraction uh, upon uh, Triton D because calls to Triton D are very basic. So we can create objects, we call some methods for uh, some LPCs to modify. But uh, usually for, for, make, for making a transaction, a full transaction, for example, for, for rating on, um, uh, on code, we need to make many calls to, uh, to Triton D. And we uh, we had the possibility to make that on Python to write uh, LPC functions to make a, a global action, but uh, we wanted tri Triton and uh, the part of this part of Triton clean, and uh, we don't have uh, big actions just for for web. So the idea is that we have developed a middleware outside to uh, to talk to uh, to Triton uh, to manage uh, these uh, these calls and uh, to manage also uh, all the protocol uh, side uh, to manage cookies and uh, stuff like that just that are specific for web. Uh, we made this outside of, uh, outside of Christ. So I will uh, talk about this part uh, at the end. Uh, so with this, uh, we, uh, it, I, I will show later the code, but it's, uh, I think that it's 80, 80 lines of code. Uh, we reproduce the same, uh, the same file as cache.py uh, on Triton uh, on D. It's just, uh, it doesn't store in dictionaries, but it's stored in, uh, in Redis. So it was really easy. We, we reproduced the same API. We use the uh, message pack to, uh, to serialize. We had some issues with uh, some non-serializable uh, data. Uh, I think that for uh, ERV2, we have some uh, R and uh, G uh, blobs that, 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 you can, uh, that, that are not uh, serializable. And we hope one day we, uh, there was a discussion uh, with, uh, with Cedric to get, um, to have a modular, to have a way to get uh, the cache management uh, modular in, in Triton D and uh, I hope it could be, uh, we, can, uh, we can one day get this implementation out of, uh, out of, of a fork and to get it usable by, uh, by anyone who is uh, new Triton. For Nginx, uh, the good thing with Nginx is that uh, it was, uh, on Triton 3.8, it wasn't possible to, to scale. So uh, Nginx was the only solution to, uh, to, get, uh, to get stuff done. Today, we have many possibilities because we have uh, WSD and, uh, and Nginx. And I think that uh, there is something good to, 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 to do with that because uh, we, can, um, we can mix the two, the two, uh, the two tools. Uh, next. Uh, this is just uh, very quickly uh, what, what we have made about this. Here uh, we, uh, I show a diff uh, from 4.0 about cache. We have made some modifications to cache just to support, uh, to read the configuration and to know uh, if we are managing cache on Redis or not. And uh, the cache Redis class is just 80 lines of code. Uh, the cache utils is just uh, the, uh, the, the, we make the serial serializations on, uh, on that. Uh, so, what uh, what are we doing uh, here? I'm I'm talking about some stuff that are uh, good to. It's uh, how do I say that? It wasn't necess necessary to do that, but I think that it was very useful for the, for us. So the combination of uh, WSD and uh, Nginx. Also, we use Docker as a deployment tool, and uh, it's uh, it's really interesting because. We, uh, we don't have uh, any, b before, uh, we need to adapt our installation scripts to the client because uh, we have some clients that are on Red Hat uh, distribution, Debian distributions, and uh, we work on uh, Ubuntu and, and Debian, so we need to, uh, to change, uh, we need to uh, provide specific scripts to, uh, to deploy code. 
And uh, since we use Redis now, uh, we are not no more doing that. We are we uh, we Dockerize code. We use uh, Redis, Nginx, Postgres as a Docker uh, containers. We connect all of this, and we have some uh, cool scripts. For example, to uh, today to to upgrade an installation of code, we we send uh, the image, and we have just one script. We give the uh, the path of the file uh, the, uh, to uh, to update. It, it stops all, it restarts all, we, we do nothing. We have no, um, we don't need to go uh, to, uh, to work with, uh, with IT, IT guys just to deploy or uh, to upgrade an instance. It works. Uh. Just uh, for some context, usually uh, in, uh, in our business, we never have access to the production server. So uh, we always have to give uh, big files and a, a deployment procedure. And uh, sometimes it may take a few days before it's even tried. And if there is the slightest problem because there is a typo somewhere, uh, it just come back and it's not not okay. Just to have to try that to try back. So uh, now with Docker, we just have to give a big Docker file and say load, uh, upgrade, restart, and it's done. So um, that's also one of the motivation for doing this. Uh, so uh, the last two points. Uh, these are things that I hope we, we can do this year to. Uh, to, uh, to get Redis adopted by uh, the community, to get uh, the, the catch management on, on Fightly uh, customizable, so we can use it uh, without uh, having to fork. Uh, another thing that we want to do is that uh, now that we are working on uh, Nginx, uh, we have calls to, um, to Triton D, but we don't see the method that is called because uh, it's inside the, the JSON. So the problem is that we, uh, we see that uh, worker one, two, three, or four have responded to a call, it takes time, but we don't know uh, which method uh, has been called. And the idea is to, uh, to parse the JSON uh, from, uh, from Nginx to get uh, Nginx logs that are global, that, uh, that are showing what, uh, what's happened on, on server. Today, it's not really, uh, we cannot uh, use uh, the Nginx logs. And uh, we have started working on that. It's, uh, we don't have time, but uh, probably it's, uh, Nginx support uh, is supporting now uh, dynamic modules, so we can, uh, could be easy to do. Uh, this is the last point, I think. Yeah. Sorry. Ah. No conclusion. <laughs> uh, another um, uh, another big project uh, within uh, within Kupengo is working on uh, on web. What I have explained is that, uh, and uh, uh, Roman talked about that yesterday. So wha we are uh, deploying uh, back office application for for our clients. But usually they need also uh, another part, which is a uh, front, uh, front application for two reasons. They want to have some uh, front uh, application for their, um, for their uh, clients. For example, to see, to, to declare a claim, uh, to, uh, to see uh, if they, are, uh, they have bills, uh, they have, they have bills to, to pay or stuff like that. Also, they want to be uh, behind uh, a comparator of uh, big com compar comparison platforms to, uh, to, to sell. And uh, today, uh, we don't have these uh, business APIs to, uh, to be exposed directly to, uh, to this kind, for, for this kind of, uh, of use. Uh, how it, uh, we get started, we, we have made some, uh, some trials with, uh, with Flask. And uh, our problem with Python is that for, to, to, to develop web, uh, web uh, middlewares, it doesn't scale enough. So the problem is that we, are, we know that all processing will be made by Triton. We want just some uh, a proxy or uh, a kind of uh, tool just to, commu to make communication with, with Triton and to, uh, to, to get the calls done, to make that in sequential or in parallel uh, way, and that's, that's all. We don't need uh, an ORM, we don't need uh, all of this stuff. The problem is uh, that with Python, we can have all of these, but uh, we cannot scale enough. So we decided to go with uh, Node.js technology for middleware. We, uh, we have a concurrency, uh, we have a very active community, uh, many, many uh, tools to do that. So uh, when we get, when Sao, uh, when we have seen the code of Sao, we decided to go with, uh, to, to, to take some parts of Sao, uh, communication, uh, managing RPC, managing a session and uh, models, records, groups. To, to develop a kind of Proteus on, on JavaScript. 
So the project started like that. Uh, we have some issues about which are um, specific to Sao uh, as, a, as a client, as a mono, uh, mono session uh, client. So we made some, uh, some changes to, uh, to get rid of that, to remove jQuery because we, are, we, we were willing to, uh, to, to, to run on, uh, on OGS. So we, we wanted to get stuff done by, uh, by a super agent request or, 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 kind of, or this kind of uh, libraries. And we, uh, we, we wanted to use more uh, libraries like Lodash to, to, to facilitate to get, the, to get things done uh, easier. Uh, now, uh, our libraries are completely standalone because I think that we, 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 uh, we get, we are quite far from uh, what, uh, what we have on, on SAO today. So we have three libraries which are uh, types, session and model. So we'll try to show. Uh, <coughs> Works. Not really. Uh, So these are our modules. Uh, it's quite uh, quite easy. We have types just uh, just to have a kind of constructor for for types uh, and to avoid some weird stuff on JavaScript. For example, they start counting months from from zero. So it's uh, it's not easy to uh, to uh, <laughs> to start with that. So we have uh, we have constructor from uh, from string. It uh, it works well. So. Uh, uh, we have also session. Uh, we, we wanted the, the session to be uh, separate for, separated from uh, from model, and there is no dependencies between them. Session for me is just uh, uh, a, a kind of uh, context to talk with Python. We keep uh, we persist some data on uh, on the session. Uh, we have uh, some. Uh, Uh, I don't have internet, I think. So, uh, model is uh, is uh, is the part that is uh, not far from uh, from Proteus. Uh, we can instantiate models, groups, make some search, uh, get fields, set fields, save. So, uh, sorry. I meant to uh, Now what I, uh, I will make a small demonstration of, uh, of, uh, of these modules. <coughs> Sorry, just watching this. Good. So the first application that we have developed with uh, with these tools is uh, a kind of benchmark 
to uh, to deployment. Our uh, we had a f we faced one problem uh, two months ago, where we had light latencies on uh, on a deployment, and uh, we cannot com convince our client that it it comes from uh, his network, uh, the connect the, the 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 connections between the database and the, the application server. So we have uh, we developed this application. So it's point. Uh, Unfortunately, <laughs> who's there? Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> um, we ran out of time. Um, what do you think? Uh, how long do you take uh, to finish the project? Five, five minutes just to show. Uh, Overestimation? Yeah. Five minutes? Five, five minutes is okay. okay. Is it okay for you when we give him five minutes more? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So uh, it's not uh, well designed. We are hiring uh, designers, so if someone is interested to, uh, to join us, but uh, it's uh, it works. It works well. So the idea is that it makes uh, it makes mini calls to the server to uh, our uh, behind that. We want to have some metrics. To know that the average time for latency is uh, is around now uh, four four millis milliseconds seconds or fourteen milliseconds, and uh, to to compare between clients to get uh, to to judge if the deployment is good or not. So we have latency, we have CPU, we have memory. Uh, these are based on a small module. I don't know <coughs> if it's public or not, but the the idea is that to make some uh, computing on on try to check to check if it's okay. To make some uh, DB uh, DB write, to make some DB uh, DB read, uh, it takes uh, it takes some time, but we have uh, it, it doesn't need any installation, and uh, we get a report to uh, to say if uh, deployment deployment is okay or not. Uh, the other the last thing that I want to show is so uh, here I'm using uh, our modules to make some. Uh, uh, some connections to Triton D. So uh, I have a first here. I, I'm connecting to the demo demonstration uh, site of, uh, of Triton. And uh, I'm trying here to get the users, for example. So I. Uh. You're still not connected to the internet, I guess. Ah, yeah. <laughs> So these are, uh, this is a kind of, uh, it's a very basic example, but the idea, what, what I really want to show here is that JavaScript is not as bad as uh, people can think. Because now uh, with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I, I know that before, to, to make uh, some server call, we need to have uh, the callback hell. So we have a code that is not uh, linear. And uh, it's not easy to, uh, to make this stuff. Today, uh, we are using uh, coroutines on JavaScript. And uh, things that, I think that things are, uh, are really better. So here, for example, I, when I read yell the party dot set default, it will call the server, and it will wait for the server to, uh, to, to, to bring the result. And uh, this call, before we make, uh, we make the call, we pass a call back. And inside the call back, we make the second call. Now we can do that, and uh, in new specifications of JavaScript, we, uh, we have more uh, asynchronous uh, tools. And uh, finally, I think that uh, we, can, uh, we can write clean uh, JavaScript code. Uh, and it's, it could be a good, um, I, I think that Node.js is very good technology to, for, for developing middlewares, and uh, coupled with, uh, with Triton D. Uh, it's quite convenient for us to uh, to make middle to make 
front uh, front applications. So it's, uh, it's up to you to uh, to uh, to take this or not. But uh, it, it works. It, it is starting work uh, for us, and uh, and it, it works well. May May I ask uh, which JavaScript version adds this syntax, or if it's a model, or where it add the the Yelp keyword, for example? Sorry. Uh, in which version of JavaScript? Ah, uh, uh, are, here, you, are you working? Yeah, I'm, here I'm, I'm working on Node.js uh, 4. Uh, I'm not using specific, uh, it's not a new feature because it's based on co, it's a coroutine uh, implementation. So the yield is, uh, is just an OS X uh, feature. Uh, sorry? Uh, it's quite working on uh, recent. Uh, yes, but recent uh, I see this code is server side code, but I'm wondering about uh, the browsers and the client side. If yeah. we can write this kind of code in client side, not not uh, via via Yeld, but uh, uh, the two the three libraries that we developed for uh, for for Triton D, they are using very basic JavaScript. Yes. To make uh, to to be used from browser from uh, from Node.js. Here it's we are using them to uh, it's a kind of wrapper around the promise mm. to uh, to uh, to make it work. But uh, the um, the three libraries are very basic, so they can use they can be used on uh, on uh, on browser. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think that I'm done with. Uh, if you have uh, questions. Uh,